this is the reality of it. People, it doesn't matter car industry or not, relationships, which is going to predominantly end up being relatable in the sense of the way you said it before the fucking matrix <laughs> unplugged itself. But yeah, man, uh, aside from all that, the, the drifting appeal, right? You said you're getting this guy ready for pro-am a month away, but aside from your local open track day from, from the, the, the first time you got inspired, you know, with the Subaru and, and world rally. I mean, well, have you ever done rally driving? Okay. Just in my backyard kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, but the whole thing is... I got, is a, like, I got a no trespassing order once, but... Okay. All right. <laughs> How did you end up deciding that drifting was it? Not just one type of driving and car building you wanted to do, but the type. It was that M3, that Technoviolet M3. I, the streets were my playground. Okay. I got a couple reckless drivings. Never really for drifting, surprisingly. Okay. Um, but... I, when I did my first on-ramp, exit 118, with my friend Kyle Larkey from high school. Okay. It was like, it was like three in the morning. I had finally done my first on-ramp. It was the best feeling in, in the world. Okay. And I, I knew my friend Kyle would be awake at three in the morning. So I called him and I said, get in the car and we're going to go drift Drifting. an on-ramp right now. Okay. And he's like down was it so, raining or anything yeah it was a little wet on the ground okay and i took him around 118 and it was like we were both just like Aah! yeah like, after successfully and it's a it's a really big one it's a very long stretch of road it kind of has like a an upward bank to it so it's yeah. a perfect little on ramp and uh such a great feeling and you were just to, absolutely hooked. I, was, I was floored sure 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 excitement. yeah for like the fire Oh, for the building, the sprinkler system for the building. Yeah. So when it comes to welding, did you are you self-taught? Yeah. That's cool, man. I think when it comes to entrepreneurship, it involves a lot of being self-taught. I mean, you would think, bro. I, I think that the amount of resources that are available to people now. Good. Makes it impossible to not just want to like go crazy and do your own thing. 100%. I mean, space and time and money obviously are very profound limiting factors. But, oh yeah, the amount of resources that we all have access to, it's pretty gnarly, man. You could be a doctor with YouTube now. You could? Maybe you should Well, there's a lot of YouTube doctors. Maybe you shouldn't. Little, Maybe you should A little shouldn't. bit more of a liability there. Less liability welding. So we got the Sparta brakes. Dude, I appreciate the light because I can, I can highlight those awesome brakes. <laughs> you can actually see them. Kansai, Kansai wheels. Yeah. I know them. Him, them. Chris. Yeah, good dude. Good dude. Yep. Um, all right, so. <laughs> have you heard this thing? Uh, I, I have on, on one of your gram joints. But not in person. Do you want to hear it in person? While the garage door is closed? Are we going to... So it echoes extra loud? I mean, it will actually... I'm just worried about carbon monoxide death. Oh, you're not getting carbon monoxide death. We have a great ventilation system. <laughs> See this? Ah! This is one of those, uh... One of those, uh... Stove top fans. Yes. Ah. Really, really powerful. Alright, so... Um... Ventilation system ready? Let's uh. Let's I'm, we're not gonna leave it running. We're just gonna turn on for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By all means. If it even, even if it even does, we're we're still experiencing some uh, technical difficulties wiring. -wise. Yeah, but I just heard the fuel prime. Uh huh. Wait, I, let me hold the camera for a second because I, I want to see your reaction when this thing turns on. All right, let's. Uh... Uh, Come on. Okay. All right. I mean, let's give it. Let me, let me just give it a little bit of, a little bit of pedal. A little bit of throttle. I I don't know if we just disconnect the fuel pump relay or what, but I know it's priming, but it's, just, it's priming. It should it should turn on.
Well, All right, well. The, the effort was there. And, was, and it just This thing's been firing up no problem <laughs> last night. <laughs> Well, that's just how it goes. Hey, I'm not. I'm. I don't have my hands in, all tangled in the wiring right now. Yes. So my friend David's been coming down, and we've been connecting things, disconnecting yes. things. So maybe he disconnected something before. Maybe. He left. Maybe it's David's fault. Maybe it's David's <laughs> fault. <laughs> all right. So it, look. Aside from the car, right? I mean, car content all day long. You know, people can see your channel, your social media for that. I, you know, for me, being. Being in this scene, in this culture, in, the, in this industry for as long as I have been, I, I don't know if it's a personal thing, a philosophical thing, and I'm okay with it being one, two, or all of the above, but I just, I care more about people, and I want to know what people are about, the why, not the how, but the why people do what they do, and, um, and even if I don't even agree with the why, it's, it's getting to know a person, and, and, and where their mind is, what their intentions are, and what they get from it. And, you know, we've had these, you know, you and I have had some very personal conversations, um, kind of from when you came to the, the Super Street uh, event at the LeMay, Le you know, that the, the homie Sam Du did, and you were there, and, and um, I met you and a friend, um, you know, who was there with you at that time. And um, we've, uh, you know, we've, we've had conversations ranging from I don't know, just industry and life to um, politics and COVID and and freedom of X, Y, and Z or speech and whatnot. And, you know, it is as much as it can be dangerous, if that's the right word, um, the one thing I've noticed is, is you don't allow that to hinder you from speaking on things. And you speak on things that have, in a measurable or quantifiable way, been actually detrimental to you as far as the loss of followers in the sense of that's an easy way to for it to be real, kind of like relatable and, and quantified to people yeah. be, there's a measurable literal loss um, of followers because you are saying things that make people uncomfortable um, whether see whether or not you agree with what someone thinks is I think that that that's a very interesting problem is that I think somehow people think that we all have to agree with each other. Yeah. And I don't really understand why you have to agree. You can disagree and still be okay with one another, but that's becoming increasingly not possible. Everything's polarized to the point where if somebody thinks differently about anything, you can't even be cool with them. Yeah, you can't even be friends anymore. Can't even be friends. I had a conversation recently with somebody who said, if you and I both don't have the same sense of reality, Yes. Then there is no conversation. And I obviously disagree with that. Yes. <laughs> strongly. Um, but that is becoming increasingly more other people's perceptions. Yes. And so what I am trying to do is I'm trying to open the door for those conversations, whether it starts an argument or mm -hmm. it's just a healthy, open dialogue, or it's just, if it's a very toxic conversation because, it, you know, they're offended by what you're saying. Either way, it's... Let's talk about things. Let's yeah. talk about what we've all been affected by all year long. And I'm, I'm learning a lot that it comes down to a matter of perspective. A sure. lot of people, I don't want to talk about it because it makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about it because I am comfortable. All right. Getting unemployment or whatever it is that's keeping them floating. So I don't want things to change. All right. Some people are liking what's been going on this year. Uh, but a lot of people have n no concept of reality for those that are detrimentally affected financially, economically, relationally, sure. economically. socially, absolutely. And so the majority of people are trying to silence the people who are actually going through the most pain. Um, that it, that it, it could be a also a controversial statement because uh, you know there's also the health side of the conversation um, and the people that are literally going through pain uh, there's a there's a oh so much to talk about but well, I, look, we've my, done my, a couple joint live streams where we, we had a chance to at least in a way that was viewable slash listenable um, and and you know I it, w it was interesting how that one joint live stream we did wasn't able to be put on IG which was like 
Okay. Interesting. So All the other ones we did yeah. were, but not that one. So I, in that sense, it can be referenced. But, you know, this, this conversation here, you know... Lots. <laughs> political, religious, conspiratorial... You have to be able to have conversations with people who think differently than you. And at the end of that conversation, if you say, I don't agree with anything you said, at least if you had a conversation and you understand where they're coming from and you've made a choice to not agree, you can still be cool. That's one thing that him and I have talked about. We're from two entirely different generations and upbringings, and I don't think that we agree on a pretty decent amount of things, <laughs> uh, profound things. But that's exactly the point. I can still be here and have a conversation with him. I mean, obviously I love cars and different sections of the industry and the culture, but we can talk about things and not agree politically, religiously, philosophically, and I can still have this conversation with him and uh, provide a platform for him to, to, to share his thoughts. And Amen. I don't really know why that's so Hard for people to Hard for grasp. people. Now, if it's something... Okay, well, hold on. Let's play devil's advocate. I understand that let's take something like morality, right? Now you're talking about people who... I'm not talking about fanatically. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm just talking about if somebody has a line in the sand where in their personal belief system that is immoral or that is just flat out wrong, whatever that is, and I can't or won't associate with someone who is part of something that I find so utterly wrong, th therein is a scenario where I actually am not even mad at that. You don't have to yeah. hate the person, you don't have to and talk badly. A, and that's appropriate, that's just, yes. like, that's just like setting boundaries in, in life, like before all this happened this, yes. this year, this should have, that should be a standard in your life in absolutely. general. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, if say somebody that you're associating with is just doing something just completely morally against what you believe, yes that's actually affecting other people or themselves negatively, like then, yeah, this is, if you want to disassociate from that person, that's up for you to, to do. Today, uh, we've, the, today's political climate has made us so divisive yes. that people are disassociating for just having simply a different opinion, Correct. Correct. opinion or perspective. And not just separating, just they shutting. are ostracizing, hating, oh, yeah. attacking. Canceling. Yeah, and you're just like, wait, 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 wait. You don't have to like it, you don't have to agree with it, but that's another human being that lives in the same culture, same city as you. You can't, we can't just off each other because. Yeah, now, now I may be the only person in Seattle that has an American flag in my shop over there. Um, that not just an American flag, <laughs> but it's illuminated. <laughs> Now, why would you be the only person in Seattle <laughs> with an American flag? I mean, I'm exaggerating, okay. but... And some mood lighting on I'm, some hardware. I'm, try, I'm trying to, <laughs> to, to make a, a point that I am uh, very different from, I'd say, 90% of people that are in this city. Yeah. I think differently. I belong in the South. Okay. Might as well you be. mean based off of the way you feel about things, sure. that's where it seems like you would fit in the most? Politically, well, yeah. Yeah, politically. But, but I don't, I, part of the reason I stay here is, and part of the reason I choose not to also fit in on social media. So okay. I guess literally and social media -ly Okay. Is yeah. because uh, if you're going to make an impact uh, anywhere, be, uh, let's, let's just, let's break it down. Let's take away from politics for a second. Sure. Let's bring it to this car. Okay. For Majority of the people in this city uh, probably are not stoked about this car. <laughs> <laughs> it's very loud. Yes. To the point that it can be intolerable. Yes. Uh, you know. It's very loud it's, in a few just, different ways. Yeah. In the way it's driven. Yes. In the <laughs> in person the, driving it. The person driving it. Yeah. You the know, only thing that I isn't up, loud about it is the up, color. When I rock up to a protest in this car, it hurts some feelings. Yes. Without me even doing anything. Okay. I yes. could even, like, quietly. I have a video, actually, of me quietly driving up to a protest and somebody getting real worked up over it. So the, the point is, is you're not going to make a big impact by fitting in and only associating. This, this all comes full, full circle because if you only associate with people that think and the believe same the same you. way you do, yes. you're not challenging yourself. Anything. 
Correct. You're not challenging them. You're not I challenging I was just having yourself. that conversation with someone. You are in a bubble of like-minded thinkers, which, I mean, it's, it's healthier probably to be around people that think, like, it's less uh, mentally... Taxing? Taxing. <laughs> if you're just hanging out, you're comfortably hanging out with people that think the same way you do, and it, it would be nice. I should probably, like, take a break from Seattle, fly to Florida for a couple weeks. Yeah recharge my battery, my social <laughs> batteries. But um, I think you're gonna make a much bigger impact uh, in, a, in an area where people don't think the same way. Sure, you know? I agree with that. In all, in all things, that's, that's the only way to really you know, stimulate growth in your mind. If everyone believes the same thing, like if you're like, my goal in life is to have the biggest fucking biceps, right? And you go to a bicep convention <laughs> and you're just there, everyone's just curling all the things, yeah. right? You're not gonna feel that special. You're not gonna feel that fucking special, right? And you're also gonna just, all you're gonna learn more about are the biceps, right? Yeah. But if you're just like, hey, somebody's like, did you know that there's a bodybuilding. Well, no, did you know there's a muscle behind the bicep? It's yeah. called the tricep, and everyone's like, we're not fucking here for triceps. <laughs> We're here for <laughs> biceps, right? But being in an environment where you, someone starts to be like, hey, what about the triceps? And you're like, and you start to realize that there's yeah. more to one thing. It's a compliment. Absolutely. Know? And I think that I think that that simple premise that you're able to express right now, but not just express verbally, but in the way that you do things, is one of the reasons why we maintain contact. And for me to piggyback, I appreciate that. And to piggyback off of your bicep analogy, yes, um, there can be a point where you're starting to inject things in your bicep yes. and then and then it becomes unhealthy to the point that it's the only muscle in your body that other things are starting to tear around it because yes. your biceps are so massive correct it's not in synergistic the, and then in the same way politically and yes. in other ways if you're like let's just like the church for example All if right. you're if you're in a christian bubble with a bunch of Christians where you get to a point where you become more extreme in your belief because that's all you're surrounded by, then you become more judgmental to people that are not in the same circle as you. Um, that's a problem with faith. Uh, politically, if, if you're in a realm where your beliefs may be ex starting to become more extreme yes, um, and you don't have anybody to challenge you, uh, like as a, myself as a moderate conservative, if I didn't have a, a liberal point of view to challenge my thoughts, maybe my thoughts would develop into something more extreme versus, you know, like say, you know, you take two, a blanket, a, a simple black and white argument and that they're never black and white, but you know, maybe my view was a little more extreme on, let's just say pro, life pro-choice okay right like no i believe this that and this and then when you listen to the other side you hear more anecdotal things uh more personal stories and although i may still draw a line in the sand on certain things yeah i'll now know how to maybe approach a conversation with more empathy to the other side even if we don't disagree with each other you're learning how to communicate. And at the end of the day, especially what's happened this year, we need to start seeing each other as people. Yeah, more. because we are all part of the same community and society. Yeah. And, and people are not doing that. And this car, this car industry, for example, is filled with people that think this way and think this yes. way. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm noticing uh, <laughs> certain phone calls that I used to get that I don't. Uh, I'm noticing, uh, because if you think differently than me, then we can't you, be friends. You're thinking what? Maybe from your political expressions? Yeah, people, mm. will, people will tend to put you in a box uh, without, it's, it's weird because you would think with the amount of, I like to use this word, but equity you've put into relationships, okay. you would deserve at least a healthy conversation mm. to then decide to if you're going to disassociate with somebody. Understood. And unfortunately, uh -huh. we're not even getting uh -huh. that these days. No, no, you know that in general, though. To to be fair to you, you know, coming from someone, uh, you know, substantially older than you, what you're experiencing is unfortunately not going to be the first time, and it's yeah. not going to be the last. It is it is um, it is harsh, but the reality is is that 
the majority of people in life are not going to sit down and have the conversation. They're going to just leave you. Yeah. That's the reality. You're too far gone. You're, You're not even worth not the even energy. Worth ah. I can't believe that you think that. Fuck you. I'm out. And, I, and, the, and I'll just, I think to wrap up this part of the conversation at least, uh, I think people need to come to an understanding that what I said in the beginning, um, we do have different senses of reality. There, there is, there is one reality. Okay. All right, uh, camera battery died, but where I was at was just, I think that people need to grasp um, that we have a different sense of reality based yeah. off of the train of information that we see. And with today's algorithms and social media catering to what we believe, um, we're gonna have wildly, wildly different senses of reality. Yes. Based off what we're seeing. And people need to be okay, uh, or at least establish that, and then we should be able to have a conversation. And if we disagree with each other, shouldn't be judgmental toward each other. You know, I, th I think in fact this year, that is the light at the end of the tunnel for the people that are not weak-minded toward this is they are learning better. You know, before we used to have a conversation with somebody at a bar and then you think, you believe that? You think that? And we mm -hmm. used to be like, that guy's weird. And yeah. I think now it's challenging us even more to understand maybe that person just was fed different information their whole life. Or, or because you're having a conversation with someone at a bar, <laughs> <laughs> that perhaps yeah. that might not be the time they'd be there with you entirely. Right. So in conclusion though, Zach, America. 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 Okay. Much more often. So I'm basically, like the last time I was here with my family, bro, the last time I was here with my family, the day before I left, they were like, so when are you coming back? And I was just like, um, I don't know. And they were like, here. And someone gave me an Alaska Airlines code. And I was like, I guess I'm booking my fucking return flight before I even leave. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the way it's happening now is I'm just, I'm booking a flight prior to my departure. Um, you know, with two, three months, you know, two, three months in advance. So you, so you really aren't going to be doing much uh, video production any anytime soon on purpose? I'm, I'm getting back into it you know, on the driver's side. Well, yeah? You get in, right? Yeah. Make sure the door doesn't touch. It can touch. It's got a like a side molding thing. We're inside, We're inside the E30. Inside the E30. Yes. Yes. Did you like, did you like that LED? Hmm? Do you want those lights on or? Oh. What do you think? I like it. No, let's go on. Oh, it's mood lighting. Okay, so. It's all about setting the mood. Aside from cars, if there were people who wanted, if you wanted someone to really just have a feel for what goes on in your mind, it's, it sounds broad, but I mean it. Like, if somebody watches this and they're like, I've never heard of this individual, this shop, I don't follow drifting, I don't, whatever, for whatever, right? They just don't know anything about it. What would be the one thing that you'd really want them to take away about who you are? Um, I think in the pursuit of success, trying to maintain being authentic is definitely the hard route because like, here's something I tell people, YouTube has a lot of dumb people on it, a yes, lot it of dumb content. In fact, the most successful people on YouTube, a lot of them make some pretty dumb content. But there are more dumb people than not watching these YouTube videos. Therefore, they will drive with that dumb content. 
Now that's a negative message and I don't want that to be the end all be all of what I'm saying. But it may be a longer and harder route to create authentic content, higher production value content, not necessarily appeasing to YouTube. This is just YouTube, but um, finding a balance is important, A. Uh, B, when you, when you are yourself and you do find success and you do get to a point of financial sustainability, which I am still on a long road <laughs> sure. Sure. away from, but imagine how much more gratifying you will feel if you're able to be a visionary, you know, see that idea of success in your future, uh, ha hold on to the bigger idea of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And imagine how much better it's going to feel when you're at the, when you're somewhere closer to the top in, in what you're doing, but having had made content that you know did inspire people and knowing that you were authentic with your audience the whole time, knowing that you were able to do what you love doing and simultaneously find success out of it versus cutting corners to find success, not being authentic with your audience, you know, getting to the top by making crappy content. I imagine when you when you get to that peak of fulfillment, like let's just take a super really quick a Super Bowl winner for example. Okay. You know, let's say you're Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, I believe, was an authentic individual who, when he reached his peak, he still has more mountains he can find to climb, and he feels fulfilled in his life but i can imagine a lot of football stars athletes who that you know they reached their peak in life that maybe that's a horrible example my point is yes jake paul <laughs> how the fuck did you go from russell wilson to jake paul well russell wilson's a good <laughs> what's happening Oh my god. I was looking at my hood when the door was closing. I was thinking the hood was going to fall off. Oh god. Anyways. <laughs> That's what happens when you mention. <laughs> He's coming after me now. I'm using Russell Wilson as a, as an as a somebody of moral character who did live his authentic best life and um but you know who's reached the top. But Jake Paul for example, I don't think he's really ecstatic <laughs> with knowing that all of his fans are 12 he's exploited millions of people scammed people people only maybe like him because of his clout and i imagine i know i know people talk about how lonely it is at the top okay imagine how much lonelier you'd feel at the top had you taken the easy route to get there and you weren't authentic you know, um, I think that there's one very vital point that ends up, I think, very, very innocently and accidentally missed. And um, what you just brought up, I think, is crucial, but it's always from the angle of being a creator, okay? You talk about creating content. You're talking about being authentic in what you create. And I think sometimes, you guys, it also has to be in the complete opposite, and it'd be in the content that you absorb. Okay, you don't not everyone is destined to be a creator. Not everyone is going to be able to go out there and make things uh, whether that be via social media YouTube videos. I'm talking about you need to be authentic in the things that you absorb, the content that you watch, the music and the words that people speak that you listen to and the things that you allow in your mind through your eyes and your ears. Finding the people who are authentic, finding the people who are creating for a larger purpose other than just money and views. Uh, that is important to you as a viewer and you need to be able to discern that for yourself so not just as a creator but being authentic as a viewer yeah. and supporting the people who create for the reasons that you believe in amen you agree with that there we go and there it is and on that note 
because we got doors slamming thank, and electrical. Thank you, for, thank you for watching. Are we concluding here? Yeah, you know what? I feel like there's so much that we can converse about that there will inevitably be a part two. And, you know, the progress of the builds, the one that we're currently in, the progression on that, the one in the background there. Um, and to me, it's just a fantastic moment to be able to uh, sit here with you. Uh, I've been out here for a while and, uh, you know, carve out this time. And part two to see, you know, what what other things you've created or progressed with. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that in the next one. Cool. Sound good? There it is, you guys. Appreciate you. Zach and uh, everyone in the PNW that I've been up here. I appreciate you guys and the hospitality. Thank you for having us behind the scenes at... Zwing HQ. Zwing HQ. Peace.